on, everybody? It is Thursday, April 26th, and uh, the baseball main slate is not that exciting. I feel like we should probably just talk about LeBron's buzzer beater last night, which was incredible, but we're probably going to end up just talking about these four games really quickly. Jake, did you watch the LeBron buzzer beater last night? Of course, yeah. So, yeah, when I was messaging you a little bit, uh, yeah. talking about the night shift, I, I flipped it on and... I watched the last five or six minutes, and it did not disappoint. Um, just LeBron doing LeBron things. So that was always good to see. And um, Weird way to start a baseball show. Fun to watch. As much as to not like him. What's that? I said this is a weird way to start a baseball show. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, every, all, your, all your people are, are basketball people anyway. So yeah. better than me talking about hockey. But, yeah, okay. LeBron just... Do you just follow nuts. House of Highlights on Instagram by any chance? I don't. Okay. Uh, just constantly posting, like, basketball clips. That's, like, the go-to spot for uh, any highlights for a given night. But they've got a video of, like, a seven- or eight-year-old kid calling game, like, as Brown is about to shoot the ball, and he just turns his back to the TV, and he buries it. It's really, it's a really intense video. You should check it out. It's a little I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it right now. Okay. I'll pull it up. <laughs> oh my god nobody's gonna care about this but i'm really happy for the kid just calling it he just says game yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that'll get us pulled off of youtube or anything but whatever that kid is dope for calling that just, just credit the Instagram account. Yeah, you, yeah. you credit the Instagram what up, account. What up, House of Highlights? Yeah. You don't need my credit. Nobody's going to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Millions of people check out your stuff. We got 1,500. <laughs> Let's yeah. get into this. Orioles and Rays. Uh, I forgot the timestamp the first one. Whatever. doesn't matter. Orioles, four-run implied total. Rays, 3.7. Uh, it's a 54% chance to win for the Orioles. Dylan Bundy going for Baltimore. Chris Archer going for the Rays. Uh, if I'm going to have anybody here, it's probably Archer. Uh, $1,500 cheaper than Bundy on FanDuel. $1,000 cheaper on DK. I just, like, neither of the implied totals are terribly scary. There's not a ton of pitching out there on this slate to begin with. I'll take my chances with Archer's stuff against the, the Baltimore righties. I like both of the pitchers here. Um, Bundy has been really, really good. He's sixth in wisp for swing this year. He's just been really good against righties, over 40% strikeout rate against righties, um, over 22 against lefties, which is nice to see as well. He improved a little bit against lefties towards the end of last season, and it looks like he's made a little bit of a jump even to start this year off. So swinging strike rate looks awesome, like one of the best in the league for starters, 17.4%. He is well worth the $9,800 price tag on DK for me, and then I'd like him on FanDuel too for $9,700. Archer, we, we just love targeting against this Baltimore team right now. So many swings and misses. Um, they're just amongst the league lead in the three stats that I look at for, for – uh, Team batting, so O swing percentage, swing percentage, and um, what's the last one? Oh, swinging strike rate. Yeah. So just keep targeting strikeout pitches against Baltimore until further notice, and Archer definitely has the stuff. Um, do you really have in any interest in mini bats here? I guess the only guy I'm looking at is Machado. Machado? That one I didn't see coming, but yeah, he's so expensive. Yeah, he is. That That's kind of why. So no one's gonna be on him today. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna be on him. He's a really good hitter, and Archer does give up hard contact to both both sides. So just a contrarian one off there. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's Manny Machado. It's not as if he's not an elite hitter. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem. It's not as if you're just picking some guy randomly. Uh, I would not have expected you to say that you like Machado today. Um, Hitters, I'd be more likely to be on a raise stack for price than anything else. Um, like if I were paying up for sale, 
I can see being on a couple raised bats. You know, Spawn, yeah. Brad Miller. I, I hate myself for saying it because I hate the Rays lineup, but they're just they're so bargain priced that it's worth a, a little bit of a peek. Daniel Robertson on DraftKings is only two thousand. He's thirty one hundred on Fanduel. So I wonder if Robertson? that's a bug. I wonder no, if he, m- multiple Daniel Robinson Robertson. Yeah, he's uh, I'm seeing thirty four hundred. Okay, it, so it's there, pulling a second Daniel Robertson. Yeah, I think there are two. <laughs> Interesting. I was like, that's you don't see that every day. Yeah, that'd Absolutely. be really weird. So for some reason, this sorted itself weird again. Fix that. Does that fix Robertson's price? Now there's just two of this cat. Yeah. Daniel Rob. So that's the first, oh, the Arizona outfielder. Okay. We're going to delete you out of there since you're not relevant. People need to not have the same name. It should be like the uh, yeah. the like the actors guild. You can only have one guy with a certain name. Everybody needs like an initial or something after a while. <laughs> All right. So, uh, ignore anything that I just said about Daniel Robertson. He's 3400 on DK, not minimum salary which would be uh, a little bit different. I don't like the Rays stack as much now. There's not as much green on the screen as there was before. Um, like, uh, you know, I say this probably every day. I'd look at Alvarez and Chris Davis for the lefty-righty matchups. Again, 2300 for Alvarez, 2500 for Chris Davis. They're just... They're priced too low for guys that can hit bombs on FanDuel. Uh, I don't know what else, but, like, I don't like going against Chris Archer. So I don't love the bats really either side. And neither of these teams are popping up as any of my primary stacks. So they're not guys that I would prioritize. That's fair. I think I just prefer, I don't want to target against Bundy really at all. And I think the Rays might get some ownership, like you said, when when people pay up for sale. So they're just so cheap still on DK. Um, I don't really know where people are going to, this game might be stacked up because of sales price. Like he's just he's really tough to get in with a decent second pitcher, and then people will just default to the lower price stacks. And both these teams are are pretty low priced. But I'm not really on many of the bats here. Maybe a Machado would be really contrarian, especially if you're not playing sale because you'll have extra salary. Yeah. And then Pedro Alvarez would probably be the other guy that I like for Baltimore. You like uh, you like Bundy a lot more than I do. I love Bundy. I, I think he's a different pitcher. Like that swinging strike rate is nasty. Seventeen point four percent is pretty insane. Like, and if you just look at the game logs, it's not like he's just had a couple big games. As far as swings and misses, like seventeen point one, sixteen point three, seventeen point eight. His lowest is thirteen point eight, and then twenty one point three last start against Cleveland. Yeah, I mean he's been he's been very different this year, and I don't really know why. Like his his pitch selection seems to be you know very similar to what it was last year. I don't see any major changes in velocity. Um, he's probably just getting better movement on his pitches, and I, I haven't dug into him that deep just because of time reasons. But I could do that today. Like you can you can track their actual pitch movement on like baseball prospectus. Yeah. So that might be the case. All I know is that he's getting a ton of swing and misses. Yeah, he's been I mean he's been great. It's let's see, pitch values per one hundred. What pitch has been carrying him? So he throws mostly fastball, slider, change up curve. Uh his slider has become real nasty compared to last year. So okay, let's see. Let's see what his slider is looking like. And here. he's not getting hit as hard on his fastball. Yeah. Oh my God. He, okay. So I'm gonna search for this year players that have thrown 50 plus sliders, um, and look at their whiff percentage. I bet Bundy is at or near the top because he's got a 37% whiff rate and that's not even whiff per swing. Um, so he should be way, way up there. Yeah, he's at the top. Yeah. So his whiff per swing on his slider this year, and he's thrown 131 of them. 
are is at 63.64 percent which is insane that's uh four percent above the next guy which is patrick corbin then robbie ray then uh Tehran, marcus stroman blake snell Cindergard. so he's in good company or above good company just that slider has just been devastating it's he's been real nasty with it yeah well, good to know I mean, I yeah, like so- like I liked Bundy a lot as a prospect. I never saw like I'm wondering if he's just now finally healthy. That could be it. Yeah, like these guys make these jumps, and you usually see it at the beginning of the season. Maybe he'll wear down, but I'm just gonna ride him until he's either not healthy or just not getting the swings and misses anymore. Cleveland, Boston, Toronto, Houston, and Minnesota. Those are the teams that he's faced so far. I mean, Houston, Boston, Cleveland, those are three really tough teams. Yeah, Red Sox, you know, low in swinging strikes. Um, I think he he goes out. Low in swinging strikes, and he K'd eight. Yeah. So he's looking good. He's doing it against real competition. Maybe I'm underrating Bundy. Yeah. I think Bundy might be my SP one tonight, okay. and I don't I don't know that he outscores Sale, but I think point per dollar he's a better play than Sale right now. Ten um, K Bundy, or you can pay thirty two hundred dollars more on DK and um, and pay up for Sale, but you're sacrificing one, maybe two or three bats there. You're no, you're right. Uh, I have a feeling we're seeing a different Bundy. I'm anxious to see how this game shakes out. Um, Rays are no, middle of the pack in swinging strike, right? Yeah. Um, I like Bundy more than I did five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> I still like Archer, though. There, there's room on the Bundy bandwagon. Yeah, I, I, I like Archer, too. I mean, high or Orioles' worst swinging strike rate in the league right now. Archer has legit strikeout stuff. Um, I'll probably end up having a decent amount of Archer, but I think I'll end up with more sale than anything else. Anything else you want to touch on here? No, just uh, play Bundy and collect your money later tonight. (laughs) There you go. Blue Jays and Red Sox. Blue Jays 3.2 run implied total. Red Sox 4.6. It's a 65% chance to win for the Sox. Uh, Marco Estrada going for the Blue Jays. Chris Sale going for Boston. Um, it's not going to be any sort of amazing news when I say that Chris Sale looks like a really nice pitching option, particularly on FanDuel. Uh, he, he's his price is perfect. He's very expensive on DraftKings, which is really tough on a four-game slate. Um, I, I assume we don't have too much to talk about with regards to Sale. I, we're not like recreating the wheel here. He looks good because he's good, and the Blue Jays aren't from a hitting perspective. Yeah, everything checks out for sale for me. I wish DK would have done what they did with Kershaw yesterday and priced him at 14000 and made people decide whether to go him or um, or fade him and just make every other pitcher sort of way below him. Why they kind of did that. Kershaw yesterday, dude? He was th- minus dude. 350 favorite. Amazing. And then... Oh, no, no. So I'm yeah, so that. I no 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 I I was on Kurt like I thought I was playing Kershaw the entire day and then um, Osmo commented like about uh, Trevor Bauer and so I looked into Bauer a little bit um, he was like four k cheaper or something yeah and he let me get in like every bat ever so I I popped it in chat or whatever and said I guess I'm higher on Bauer now and it worked out but the rest of my lineup sucked but. Um, for 14K, you needed Kershaw to be the the raw point scorer. And um, oh, you mean so, you didn't need five innings, six walks? <laughs> yeah, I saw his his pitch count was way up. I, dude, the Marlins just might be um, just a tough team. Like they might just Marlins, be like 29th test- in the league in weighted runs created plus. <laughs> yeah, but they just keep like grinding out at bats and. Getting these pitchers out after five or six innings, no one's going very deep against them, which is weird. They should be, but I, just, I don't get. I don't it. know what's going on. That is like the most ridiculous outcome yesterday. 
Yeah. So, all right. So, Sale, I mean, I like Sale. He's striking out right. He's a huge 36.5% rate. Yeah. Uh, soft contact is there. Um, there's a bunch of righties in this lineup, but like he has no trouble striking out righties. I think he's going to strike out a bunch of guys, have a good start here, and probably get you a win. Um, if you want to target against him, I think uh, Russell Martin, maybe, or Solarte, all these these Blue Jays are really cheap. So if you're not playing Sale, it might be a good idea to get one, maybe two batters against him. Because if if Toronto gets to Sale, like, or if Sale's not going to pitch a great game, someone's going to get to him. You know what I'm saying? So sure. you're going to want to get those, those one or two bats that, that get him, whether it's a home run or RBI double, because then you're creating so much leverage on the field where sales ownership is going to be 50% probably. So just, just a thought there, like there are guys in this lineup that could theoretically get to him and smoke Solarte and, and Russell Martin would probably be the guys that, that I like the most. Blue Jays on the season, uh, 126 ISO versus lefties. That's 24th. Um, and they have a, they are 21st in weighted runs created plus. Um, so, yeah, quite a bit below average versus lefties so far. It's it's hard to avoid sale tonight. Um, I also said the same thing about Kershaw last night, and he walked six Marlins for some strange reason on a game where he was the biggest favorite I've seen in like a really long time. They might the Marlins might as well have thrown me out there on the hill to get that kind of line. But, How about Trevor Richards, too? Yeah, he, had, uh, he had, like, 10 strikeouts. He, yeah, I was going to say, I know that he had, like, 8 or 9 Ks at the last point I looked at it. Um, yeah. Which is just, you know, amazing. Because I love the Dodgers stack yesterday, too. He would he went 4 and 2 thirds, gave up 1 hit, and 10 Ks. 10 Ks and 4 and 2 thirds. Yeah. That's 10 baseball's weird, man. Outs. Yeah, baseball's weird. <laughs> Baseball's super weird. Uh, I love the Red Sox bats. Um, I'm not in the minority. They have the highest implied total right now. Uh, you can give me anybody from Betts all the way down to Jackie Bradley, and uh, I'm, I'm completely in. If you want Christian Vasquez on DK as a catcher, like you can go anywhere in 1-8, to eight, and I think it's perfectly fine. Um, I'm not I, – I said it in the spotlight stacks. I'm not like – Telling anybody the things they don't already know. Everybody knows the Red Sox offense is amazing. Um, I like Ben Intendi a lot here. I assume you do too. Yeah, Ben Intendi for forty two hundred on DK is is a really nice price. All these Red Sox are more than in play. The problem is if you play Sale, you're probably not going to be able to fit um, the full like top five or top or five out of the top six. Red Sox. So if you're not playing Sale and you want to pay up for the Red Sox bats, um, get these expensive guys like J.D. Martinez, Hanley Ramirez, and Betts, and you're going to have a different lineup regardless if you're not playing Sale. So, um, yeah, I, I love the Red Sox here. I'll probably have a bunch of them. Yeah, it's it's hard not to with that uh, with that implied total. Like it's just on a four game slate, I'm going to bet on the talent and the Red Sox have more of it in their lineup than any other team playing today. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Blue Jays. I wouldn't touch at all. Um, I might, I might have one batter if I don't play sale. If they had better guys at like positions, I wanted to do that. Like I don't want smoke. I mean, 3,500 on DK is not bad, but like, Mm-hmm. I can find a better first base matchup than that. If For they sure. had a good yeah. second baseman or shortstop that could slot in nicely as a one-off play, I'd be I'd be a little bit more interested. Yeah. Um, but you're getting guys like Aldemis Diaz or they don't even who's this Guriel, uh, younger Guriel. Mm-hmm. Um, so like. Everything is just a corner bat or a first baseman yeah. type guy. You know, Solarte is the only guy that I could see slotting in at third um, outside of a stack. But, yeah, for me, it's just all Red Sox. They'll be – I'll live and die by the Sox tonight. 
Yeah, that's fair. Cubs and Brewers. Uh, there isn't a total yet on this game. I mentioned that in the stacks. Uh, it's not something we've ever talked about. Uh, any games that are in Wrigley uh, usually are late to the board with a uh, <clears throat> with the implied total. Uh, wind is more prevalent in Wrigley than it is, or wind and weather, more prevalent at Wrigley than it is really at any stadium in baseball. So that line always comes out late. Um, I've got it in right now as an eight-run total. This could change a little bit once it comes out, but 4.4 run implied total for the Cubs, 3.6 for the Brewers. The line itself is legitimate, so 60% chance to win for the Cubs. You, you shouldn't see that move much. Kyle Hendricks going for Chicago. Chase Anderson going for Milwaukee. Um, I love Kyle Hendricks here, particularly on FanDuel. Uh, he's just cheap, and the Brewers implied total of 3.6 doesn't really scare me. If I was going to pay down off of sale, uh, I think I'll end up with a, a little bit of Kyle Hendricks just because his price at 6800 is too hard to pass up, at least on FanDuel. Yeah, sales or uh, sale. Uh, Hendricks price is really good on on both sites, and he's sort of I think the key to getting to sale on DK. So I think that'll be like the the chalk pairing is Hendricks and Sale. Um, I think Hendricks has a really good chance to get 15, 18, maybe twenty DK points here. We know the Brewers have a bunch of strikeouts. Especially near the bottom of their order with Aguilar, uh, VR, you got the pitcher uh, pitcher spot. So, yeah, I have no problem with Hendricks. I wish they would have priced him up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I love these Cubs bats too. So Chris Bryant, if he's in the lineup, Wilson Contreras, probably my favorite catcher on the slate. Um, Anthony Rizzo, you know, Chase Anderson does have these reverse splits, but I think he's sort of taken a step back. So I'm not really. Worried about targeting him with lefties. Um, so I love Rizzo, Schwarber, Contreras, and Chris Bryant really are the four Cubs that I really am looking forward to playing. Yeah, so I talked about it a little bit um, in the spotlight hitters or stacks. One of the two. I don't know. Uh, probably hitters. Um, I really like Javier Baez tonight. Um, I talk, you know, go to the site and read it all up, but... For the quick summary, Baez pulls the ball a lot, and Anderson gives up a lot of pulled balls to right-handed hitters. And the the major benefit of it all is that uh, Wrigley is uh, a hitter's park for right-handed power. Um, they've had a, a an above-average park factor for righty homers for like a decade now. So over that many years, I'm, I'm willing to bet that you know, righty power is a little bit better in Chicago. With all that stuff combining, like I can definitely see uh, a Baez Tater in the left in the left-handed or in the uh, left field bleachers. So that's my like uh, going out on a limb thing today. Not that picking something from Javier Baez is some sort of limb that I'm out on, but I like him a lot, a lot tonight. I'm really anxious to see the Cubs and uh, yeah. check out his at bats. I don't think he's going to be very popular on DK. He's 4,700, even if he's batting second, um, just because of sale. If you're playing sale, you're not going to be able to get up to these bats that are, that are near 5K, and that's why I love the Cubs stack if I'm going to go with like a Bundy-Archer pairing or something like that, or Bundy-Hendricks, because I'll be able to afford these guys, and I also think it's a good spot against Chase Anderson. So Cubs up there near the Red Sox as my favorite stack on the night. Do you like any of the Brewers? Um, I think it makes sense to at least consider targeting against Hendricks on DK because he's going to be really popular, I think, just because of his price. Yeah, um, I've liked Yelich basically for the past week and a half. I don't see any reason to not like him here. Um, I think the Brewers stack looks a little bit better on DK. Travis Shaw is more expensive on FanDuel than DK, so that kind of puts me off. Um Bronze price on FanDuel is starting to climb a little bit, but I still like him there. Uh, I'd be fine with like Kane, Yelich, Braun, Shaw on DK. Mm -hmm. I don't love it as much on FanDuel. The Brewers won't be near the top for me. The 3.6 run implied total is really what's bringing it all down. Yeah. And I mean, this total might be bigger once it once it comes out, right? Well, that's so true. If this comes out and it's nine, 
uh, it, it makes this game look way different. Yeah, so there is some wind right now um, blowing out. It's just going to be a matter of how hard. If it's 15, 20 miles an hour blowing out, this total is going to be 10. If it's five miles an hour blowing out, it's going to be eight and a half or something. Like, yeah. So it just like you said, just because of how Wrigley's built, because it's how old it is, the wind really affects how the ball carries. So just something to keep in mind with Wrigley Field, you're going to see a lot of ownership when it's like a, a Wrigley wind game. Yeah. So this may be one of them, and then the bats will probably be more popular. It is but, blowing out very nicely to the left field seats yeah. where Baez is going to deposit a ball and make him yeah. look like a genius. I think Chris Bryan, if he's not still woozy from getting hit in the face, yeah. I think he's got a really good chance at home run. Wilson Contreras, I think, has a really good chance at home run. And then I like Yelich and um, Low Kane for some stolen base upside. Hendricks has not been very good at holding runners. So Lorenzo Kane for 4500 going to be low-owned. It's righty righty, but if he gets on, I think he's got a good chance to steal a base here. And then Travis Shaw, of course, for forty two hundred. So uh, we didn't touch on this at all, but there are no weather concerns in the main slate. It's all it's all perfect. Nothing you need to pay attention to. You just want to pay attention to the Cubs' wind, basically. Yep. And uh, they're not going to cancel the game for wind. So right. Um, anything else I want to touch on? Yeah, like. A, you know, I talked about the Cubs and the stacks. They're one of my three major stacks, along with the Red Sox and Royals and White Sox. Royals four point five run implied total. White Sox three point seven. Uh, it's a fifty eight percent chance to win for the Royals. Uh, Jacob Junis going for Kansas City. Luke Giolito going for Chicago. Um, I won't have either of these guys. I I have some interest in Junis, so. Just like diving a little bit deeper into him. So he's played the Tigers twice, then the Angels, and then the Mariners. So those have been his four starts. And those three teams, so Tigers, Angels, Mariners, are all in the bottom 10 in K percentage against righties. And then the Angels and Tigers are, well, when I checked last night, they were sixth and seventh in hard contact percentage against righties. And Junis has just kind of survived. He's been pretty good. Um, decent swinging strike rate near 10 so this matchup against the White Sox with all these right-handed free swingers, I think that Junis could be pretty good. Okay. Um, if he was priced near Hendricks, it, it wouldn't even be close for me. I think I would just take Junis at lower ownership in what I think is a, a better matchup. But at 8,300 on DK, it's kind of hard for me to get there when Archer's 8,500, and I think he's got some some bigger upside. So yeah. Junis, he's a really contrarian option like if i was multi-entering i would definitely have a bunch of exposure to him but since it's zero or 100 for me it probably is going to be zero yeah yeah naturally you would want to drop down to archer so yeah that gets into some sort of game theory situation as to what percentage of junius would you want given the expectation that archer will be significantly higher that stuff's tricky, man. You got to talk to yeah. you got to talk to the boss about that stuff. Right. That's so like, if, that's where he separates from everyone else. Yeah. Like if Junis is going to be eight percent on this slate and Archer is going to be thirty, then yeah, like I would probably want Junis. I would probably uh, want like twelve to fourteen percent Junis and like 25, yeah, double double the field, yeah, four percent Archer. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, I'll be on the live stream later today, so maybe I'll be higher on Junis. If if it's just going to be everyone's going to plug in Sale and Hendricks, then maybe Junis makes some sense here. But um, I guess we will see it at 6 Eastern. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the pick between Hendricks and Archer will tell a lot. I'm anxious to see the, the relationship of that, uh, those ownership percentages. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um. So I wrote up the Royals bats and the stacks, and uh, I I love them. I, well, like I love them as much as I could love a team that's not good at hitting, <laughs> like the Royals. Yeah. Uh, but John Jay, Moose Tacos, and Duda all get the benefit of the oh, and Alex Gordon, I guess, all get the benefit of the the righty lefty matchup. Um, 
I had Duda as a spotlight hitter yesterday. It didn't go as well. I'm, I have him here again. He's 2,400 on FanDuel. You know, Luke Giolito projects for a 5.4 FIP. Um, so, you know, I want to take my chances in any matchup I can get where Duda gets a righty, particularly a righty that has been hittable so far. Mustakis for sure, is a guy that I want in this sort of matchup. And then if I have to fill out with Whit Merrifield or Salvador Perez, who looks significantly better on DK with needing a catcher, or even Alex, like, you know, I don't, I won't have a ton of Alex Gordon, but I'm fine with it. I'm fine with Solaire. 2700 on FanDuel is a price that I'm fine, like, I can get to. I'll go anywhere one to seven, really. Um, I won't be super happy about it, but their implied total is pretty nice for a four game slate. Yeah. Um, Giolito, he has had some real, real issues with walks. Just game by game, he's got he's got four walks, three walks, five walks, and then seven walks in two innings. That was against Houston. But, um, yeah, he, he just doesn't really have it right now, not missing any bats and getting hit hard by lefties. So I love Moustakis and Duda, just like yesterday. Um, man, like Salvador Perez for 3,500 batting fourth is really nice. Um, the only way I'm not going to get to him probably is if I go with Wilson Contreras. And then um, Soler has been crushing lefties in particular. So um, I don't really want to roll him out here, but he's still fine for 3,400 in the context of a stack. And then really anyone, I like two through six more than um, – I don't really like Alex Gordon or John Jay that much. Um, yeah, Jay's price isn't the best on DK. 2600 for the leadoff spot on FanDuel is a guy that I'm yeah. happy to have. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm on board with the Royal Stack for sure, specifically um, Moustakas and Duda. Those are two awesome plays on both sides. Royals. Uh, number one or last, depending on how you want to look at this. They have the lowest K rate versus right-handed pitching on the season. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have thought that. 16.1% versus right yeah. this year. So, yeah, don't get cute with Giolito. Like, he's 4,500 on, on DK, and I think some people probably will try to get cute and go with Sale and Giolito and try to get all the bats. But, yeah. um, man, he does not look good to me right now at, at all. Not only are the Royals the lowest, they're the lowest by a full percentage point behind the Red Sox, too. So, like, they're not striking out. Uh, that could be, yeah. you know, that can go either direction. Um, it's great. For, it's better for the Royals because the more balls you put into play, the more likely you should be to have runners on. Um, yeah. It also could allow Giolito to work quickly. Um, True. If they're not striking out, because they're not, they don't have the same sort of patience as well. Uh, if I look at the walk rate, Royals are 19th, so middle of the pack in walk rate. It's possible that they just get a lot of balls in play, and if they start landing with people, you know, Giolito could potentially go deeper into the game. Uh, but I would use that sort of information with that low K rate to want to get to more Royals, and I think that's sort of why the implied total is what it is. Um, yeah. He, it's just going to be a, a war of attrition for him that he's probably not going to be able to win. Once those things start landing, you know, you get seeing eye single from Merrifield and, you know, Moustakis puts one up the line and then Duda puts one in the seats. Like, that's, yeah. that's the recipe for it all. Um, yeah, I, I think Giolito's got a pretty good chance to get crushed here yeah. and be out of the game within three innings. Yep. Like, he... Like those walks are, are really concerning. Hard contact against lefties, and it's a balanced lineup for the Royals. So he's not really going to get any breaks, even though these guys like aren't great hitters, like Alex Gordon and Soler against a righty. But like that low K rate, um, it's just going to be a matter of whether the Royals are putting them in the gaps or hitting them right at guys. Royals fifth in the league versus right-handed pitching in hard contact. Yeah, so. Give me them Royals. Royal stack, for sure. Speaking of Royal stacks, I ran uh, Fantasy Cruncher on the main slate before we do, start. Do, do you want to talk about any White Sox bats you like oh, uh, before we go? Uh, not especially. I guess yeah. Nick Delmonico. So for me, it would just be Moncada. He's just unconscious right now. Yeah. Just 
Well, and Delmonico's three thousand. That's fine too. Um, He's twenty five hundred yeah. on Fanduel. Delmonico, not Is Moncada. He? Oh wow. <laughs> I was going to say, Mark, that's a lock, uh, even though I like Junis. So I like Junis, but yeah. Moncada is just out of his mind right now, hitting everything um, really, really hard. So prefer him against righties, and Junis is a righty. Sure. I, I don't have a problem there. Um, I don't. I wouldn't have a problem, really, with Delmonico either. It's not as if I find Junis to be some sort of amazing pitcher, but the 3.7 run implied total for the White Sox is, is gets me away from them in the, for the most part. So... I'm, I'll be heavily, heavily, heavily on Red Sox, Cubs, and Royals. Uh, Sale was the number one pitcher for me on FanDuel, and then Hendricks. A little bit of Archer and Junis, but it's all just Sale and Hendricks for me. Oh, no Bundy. No Bundy. Man. Zero I Bundy. Think, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he just doesn't grade out well for me. Uh, and then all of the stacks are basically Cubs, Royals, and... Uh, Red Sox right at the top so it's just sort of those three teams being mixed and matched across the board and then uh, every once in a while like a one-off Pedro Alvarez or something um, DK looks a little bit different as it should uh, oh, you were talking about something I was bringing it up so I'll bring it up again here then uh, pitcher wise it's, it's Hendricks and Sale in like a full 50-50 split with a bunch of Archer and Junis. And then uh, Bundy there in 17%. So we'll dig into a Bundy sale. Oh, you can't even do Bundy sale. Yeah. I don't even know if you could stack anyone with Bundy sale. Uh, I, none of the 100 lines that came up were Bundy sale. Mm -hmm. But if you want to look at it, we I could lock them both in. And we'll see what comes up in like the first 20 lines. You, yeah, you might be able to go like... You're gonna get some of, like Royals or uh, Rays and somebody. Yeah, but you can't go Rays against Bundy. That's true. Okay, so if you do Bundy and Sale, you can do Red Sox, Orioles, Orioles stacks, and it looks like maybe Red Sox, or, or Orioles, White Sox, which I wouldn't. Yeah, want I don't to mind do. that. Yeah, but I mean, let's see which one projects to the most. Yeah, you end up with uh, like not the best. Uh, Red Sox bat. A lot of Christian Vasquez. <laughs> you liked Contreras, right? Yeah, I love Contreras. Okay, he's just the one-off catcher then. Ooh, yeah, I don't... It's real tough to do Bundy sale and get... Otherwise, you're getting, like, Brock Holt. <laughs> That's not yeah. the direction you're really looking to go. So, okay, so I don't think people play both, so I think Bundy's ownership's going to be pretty low on DK, and I might, I might take a shot on him and just... You hope that would Sale do doesn't have a ceiling. Hendricks? Uh, Bundy Hendricks, I think, or Bundy Archer. Yeah, that'd probably be where I'm looking at mostly. Bundy Hendricks can give you like a really nice Cubs, oh, yeah. uh Royal stack. Yeah, I, I think I prefer that actually. So nothing against Sale. Like he's yeah. an awesome play. Like I think he's got a good chance to get 26, 27, maybe 30 points here. But if Bundy gives me 25, um, yeah, give me that for for under 10K. And you mentioned Bundy Archer. We'll, I'll do 20 quick of that. Can I not do – maybe I can't do that. It won't, I can't get any on my first setup, so maybe I have something locked incorrectly. But it looks like Bundy Archer might be tough to pull off. Oh, yeah, because they're oh. – because because of the way I have the stack set up and the fact oh that because they're, they're opposite teams the yeah yeah they won't you can't get any bats then yeah so yeah I think those uh that Hendricks Bundy setup with like a Cubs Royal stack would be a like I'll probably have that in quite a few lines on DK so that's fair anything else just a four game slate but we still went long. No, um, there's hockey today. There so go. there's two games, big two game slate. I'll have my usual articles out. So look out for those this afternoon. And um, I'll be on the live stream later today, filling in for you. Yeah. And that's about it. Yeah, no me on the live stream tonight. No NBA, really. It's just Boston and Milwaukee, one game. So uh, 
like finally play baseball, people. If you're watching this, like, well, there's only one uh, NBA game. What should I do? Play baseball. Make the transition now. It's time. We'll yeah. play hockey. Yeah. That's all I got. It's uh, Thursdays are uneventful, people. Enjoy the live stream tonight with Chris and Jake. I'll probably pop into the chat to say what up. Um, hitters and stacks are up now. Pitchers probably coming up in the next hour or so. Yeah, they should be, be out, out by time watch this. you watch. Yep. Yeah. That's all I got, guys. Best of luck tonight, and we'll talk to you guys again in the morning.